Hello, our students, general science, life science at Amal Education Institution. I am with you, the physics advisor, to discuss chapter 17 that carry the title, The Atom. In this we look for the following objectives. Atomic models, the hydrogen atom, and the principle of the laser, only for general science. Atomic models, we start mainly with Thompson. In his model, Thompson, while, while he is studying cathode rays, he discovered that a hot filament emits electric particles, charged particles. He discovered that these particles deviates in an electric field and magnetic field. He called them electrons. Electrons, he said that they are embedded within the spherically distributed positive charge. Both positive charge and the mass of the atom would be more or less uniformly distributed over the size, over its size. So this is the atom he assumed like it is. It is positively charged and the electrons are embedded in it. Approximately, approximately the diameter of uh, the atom he discovered that it is one angstrom or 10 minus 10 meter or 0.1 nanometer. Problem with Thomson model was how does the atom emit radiation? He can't answer it. And this model came into conflict with the experiment of Rutherford. That's what Rutherford, Rutherford model in 19. Zero 09, Ernest Rutherford conducting what is now famous experiment, his famous experiment, where he bombarded a golden foil which is quite malleable with an alpha particles which are helium nuclei. A source which undergoes alpha decay is placed in a lead box with a small hole in it. Any of the alpha particles which hit the inside of the box are simply stopped by the box. Only those which pass through the opening are allowed to escape and they follow a straight line. So they are energetic particles, energetic positively charged particles. The design shows, shows the experiment in action. He observed that most of the alpha particles pass straight through the golden foil. Some of the alpha particles get deflected by very small angles, a very few get deflected greatly, and even fewer get bounced of the foil and back to the left. So when being bounced, this is the, they hit the, a large object. Conclusion, the atom of, is almost empty. 99.99% is empty. The nucleus contains a positive charge and the most size of the atom, mass of the atom. The nucleus is approximately 10 or 100,000 times smaller than the atom. Rutherford results led to a new model of the atom. In Rutherford's model, negatively charged electrons orbit the positive charge nucleus as shown in the figure below. This is similar to the way where the planets orbit the sun. So they are called planet model. Now, scientists who help develop the atomic theory, they are mainly uh, scientists and Democrats, John Dalton and Joseph uh, Thompson and Ernest Rutherford. Now, why we study Bohr's model? For what model uh, this model is needed? The need for a new model, since in the emission spectrum, a spectroscope is usually an optical apparatus used to describe for dispersion of a system prism or diffraction grating to decompose light and to observe the different monochromatic radiation forming it. Using solid filament of a lamp or liquid which is a molten metal etc or gas under a very high pressure 
sources, the spectrum obtained is said to be continuous. While with the gas under low pressure in the tube under a high DC voltage source, we obtain line spectrum which are discrete. So we are with the white light, the white light entering the spectroscope, which is here a prism, solid the light source, diffract, then they emerge out of the prism, forming what we have a continuous spectrum, like this one. All the colors of the visible spectrum are observed. Now, in case of a gas in a tube under high voltage, we emit special radiations. Okay. This enters the spectroscope and analyze, we get what we call line spectrum. The line spectrum, this is the difference between continuous spectrum for the filament and the gas found here. Uh, there is a discontinuous form of line. So this is a diffraction grating that is independent. This is independent of the composition, even though while this one depends on the composition for the gas. This is the gas lamp, I think it is hydrogen lamp, okay, continuous spectrum can be explained by double diffraction of each of the radiation on both faces of the prism. The prism has two faces, on both faces of the prism he uh, explained that there is double diffraction there for this one. The line spectrum can be explained by the collision between the emitted the electrons from the cathode and the gas atoms. Line spectrum being quantized energy loss or gain by the gas atom. So for this one we have the background which is continuous spectrum of uh, white light. There is the, the gas here, the gas uh, lamp which is mostly here hydrogen. The gas lamp enters the lens and so directed here towards the screen it is found that we have four visible lines are observed while here with the with the lamp that we are with this is the hydrogen lamp the hydrogen lamp etc there is a or we hydrogen gas here the hydrogen gas absorb the radiations here thus leaving the dark lines in the visible white light these are some gases and their spectrum that is observed here. This is the white uh, white light spectrum, and uh, these are the continuous the discrete spectrum of the gas. In analysis here, we are we have looked for absorption spectrum. A cool gas that does not emit light can absorb from the continuous spectrum of white light of wavelength the same as that it emits when it is hot leaving in the white light uh, spectrum white spectrum of uh, a set of dark lines called absorption spectrum to obtain the absorption spectrum of an atom an intense white light is crossed by a sample of cold atoms of the gas the light transmitted is then analyzed by the spectroscope that shows dark lines against the uh, continuous white light spectrum, the wavelengths that are absorbed. Bohr's model of the atom answers the following uh, aspect in a well-determined form. In order to explain the line spectrum of the gas under high DC voltage, 3000 volts or more, and low pressure, to become a hot gas, Bohr proposed a model in which he uses two Photon concept and energy level concept. Let's see what he means here. In part A, if we look for the emission spectra, we call it a disexcitation, our V excitation, where every spectral line is emitted from an atom of an element is due to a specific energy released by the atom or lost by the atom. Every spectral line, visible line, is uh, due to a specific energy the atom has released. Every specific energy lost by the atom is carried by a photon emitted from the atom. We look for the conservation of energy that gives for me the energy of the photon is the energy initial minus the energy, energy, energy final. So we have 
the energy, assume that this is the energy initial of the atom, and this is the energy fire as it falls down, loses it loses electric force to it becomes has energy less. So it uh, radiates a photon here. The energy of the photon is the difference between the energies of the two levels. And this is another design for the the this is higher energy level, this is the lower when it falls it emits a photon. When it falls from um, it emits a photon whose uh, wavelength 656. This is for the hydrogen atom. From level four down to level two, it emits a photon which uh, of wavelength 486 nanometer and so on. As the spectral lines are discrete, then the only specific values of energy are allowed. As a conclusion, the energy of an atom is quantized. The energy cannot take any value. It takes its values are discrete and will determine. Let's look for Bohr's model, who proposes that every element has its own set of energy levels. The atom may be in any one of these levels. Atoms of the same chemical element have the same set of energy levels. Different atoms have different sets of energy levels. The quantum number n equal 1 corresponds to the ground level or the fundamental state. The quantum numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. corresponds to the excited level, while the level n equal infinity to the ionized level where the electron gets free out of the atom. The atom becomes an ion. Knowing the value of the different energy levels of the atom from E1, E2, etc., E3, infinity, which is 0, we can determine the energy level diagram of so this is an energy diagram of the lithium ion that loses two electrons remarks that we have all energy levels of the atom are negative because in each the atom has no enough energy to get ionized to become ion the energy of the atom remains unchanged as long as it remains in the same level when an atom falls from a, a level N down to a level P, it emits a photon of energy, E lal photon equal E initial minus E final, that's to say equal E and minus E P, that's to say this is the diagram that converts. An atom in the level N may fall to a lower level P directly or progressively, passing through intermediate levels. Uh, for instance, O, M, Q, etc. And then you know that the energy E and P is E and minus E P. Going to the intermediate levels, E and minus E O plus E O minus E M plus etc. Then the energy is H nu. We obtain this relation. Finally, we look for the frequency of the of the radiation of the photon that is emitted in going from N to P is the sum of the frequencies of the of the intermediate level. This is called the Ritz formula. We can replace it by the formula by Ritz also. The reciprocal of the wavelength and P is the sum of the reciprocals of the individual wavelength. Part B absorption spectrum excitation plus ionization. When an atom in a given level P receives a photon of energy E and P such that E and P plus P belongs to the set of energy levels of this atom. An electron of this atom absorbs this photon and rises to occupy to the level N. We say that the photon comes in the level P and E lal photon plus E P equals E N in the set of levels. The atom absorbs this atom and goes to the higher level N. When an atom in the level N equal one, which is the ground state, receives a photon, and an electron of uh, it absorb it to occupy ionized state. This energy is special photon called ionization energy. The definition, the ionization energy of the atom as uh, defined as the minimum energy carried by an incident photon needed to carry an electron of the atom from the ground state to be ionized to the ionized state and the freed the electron 
uh, at the, the atom becomes an ion and the electron is at rest. When an atom in the level P receives a photon whose energy E, either photon equal minus E P, and electron absorb this photon and uh, the atom get ionized. The electron should be at rest. When an atom in the level P receives a photon of energy E, the photon is greater than minus E P, an electron of the atom absorbs this photon and gets ionized. The electron escapes with maximum kinetic energy, which is the sum of the energy of the photon plus E P. You know that E P is negative. When an atom in the level P receives a photon of energy E, the photon plus such that E, the photon plus E P is negative and does not belong to the we say that photon is not absorbed and that the level P. Interaction in, uh, with an electron collision, it is found that an atom in the level P is bombarded with an electron of kinetic energy E, kinetic initial. Part of the energy of the electron may, may, not uh, surely, may be absorbed as a photon by the electron of the atom. The atom is excited to a higher level and, and the incident uh, or the target electron rebounces back with a kinetic energy, which is the difference between the initial kinetic energy and the uh, En minus Ep. As remarks, interaction of atom electron is not quantized as the energy transfer is not quantized. It may, it may absorb part of the energy. Now we have the hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atom, in the studying the emission spectrum, we have under high pressure, high voltage, Balmer observed four visible lines and named them H alpha, H beta, H gamma, H delta formed by the de excitation, the downward transition from the levels 3, 4, 5, and 6 down to the level 2. Reitberg found an empirical formula eh, by trial and error that permits us to calculate the wavelength of the emitted photons. He said that for the hydrogen, 1 over lambda, the reciprocal of lambda from n to 2, going from level n to 2, is the right back constant times 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over n squared. This is the lower level, this is the initial level here, where n should be greater than or equal to 3. Right there, constant for the hydrogen is 1.097, 10 to the power 7 per meter. Right there, constant for the hydrogen, H, for hence for n equal 3, the wavelength from 3 to 2 is 600, 65, 56.3 nanometer, we call it H alpha, or N equal 4, going from N equal uh, 4 down to the level 2, the wavelength is 486.1 nanometer with H beta, and for N equal 5, the wavelength uh, from 5 to 2 is 4, so 434.1 nanometer, we call it H gamma, and uh, for N equal 6, it is 400, 10.2 nanometer we call it H, H delta. In case n greater than uh, 7 and more, the, the radiation, the wavelength is invisible. So we say that they, we cannot observe. These are the visible and uh, nothing else. E and 2, as you see, going from level n to the level 2, the energy of the photon will be is H C in 2. This is the uh, the formula of right there, it is equal minus HCRH over N squared minus uh, minus HCRH over 2 squared. So we say EN is nothing but minus HCRR squared over N squared is proportional to N. It is expressed in joule. If we convert it to electron volt, the energy will be minus 13.6 over N squared. This is for the hydrogen only. And this is the spectrum that we have. For n equal 1, it is minus 13 points. If we substitute here, n equal 1 in the ground state, it is minus 13.6. For n equal 2, we get minus 13.6 over 4, we get minus 3.4, and so on. For n equal infinity, the energy will be 0. The energy, as you see, it is 0. So, we explain this, and we found we can calculate them surely by... Okay.
this is uh, a way to the downward transition from the level from level we have these are the series of the hydrogen atom going from level three down to level two three and uh, uh, up to six to the level two we call it we have what we call balma theory discovered by balma while in going down to the level one from level two and uh, so on we get Lehman series these are ultraviolet we have uh, falling down to the level for instance three we get fashion series fashion series which are invisible they are infrared and so on this is the way uh, to represent the energy levels of as remarks hydrogenoid ion uh, uh, hydrogenoids are ionized atoms nuclei that are surrounded by one electron on the energy of these ions are given by the relation e and equal minus e ionization divided by n squared for helium for helium plus it loses one electron it has one orbital electron for lithium lithium etc loses two electrons the energy the knowing the ionization energy of the hydrogen is 13.6 electron volt that of the helium is 54.4 electron volt while that for lithium double plus plus is 122 electron volt if we make the ratio of e ionization of helium over that of the hydrogen and lithium of the hydrogen it will be four and six it is z squared z the helium is two where z the lithium is three so e ionization for the uh, any hydrogenoid ion will be equal z squared times the e ionization of the hydrogen so the formula here will be z squared times minus 13.6 over uh, over n squared finally we are going to go to the principle of the laser for general science a laser is the abbreviation of the scientific phrase light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation light amplification light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation properties that is monochromatic highly monochromatic highly coherent okay they are all in uh, phase uh, they are unidirectional we are with the types of emissions spontaneous and uh, okay and stimulated emissions spontaneous emission when an atom in the initial state e p receives an incident photon of minus e p where n is in permitted level occupied by the atom and greater than p the atom absorbs this photon and excited to occupy the, that level as a result atoms receive many effective photons excited to higher levels these atoms cannot stay in the same in these levels for a longer time it's less than 10 to the power minus 8 of a second then they release energy go back to the ground state this process is called spontaneous emission they they uh, do it as spontaneously the light produced is uh, said to be polychromatic while with stimulated emission all the atoms here i in short all the atoms are they are uh, they are populated in the same ionized level in the same level and when an extra photon comes incident here they are agitated and uh, soon they enter they fall they fall down to the ground state emitting an, an, another uh, photon the incident photon is not absorbed so we get instead here we have two photons alike they are coherent they are in phase or they are and mostly in phase thank you for